mobile phones have come a long way since the first Motorola Dynatech, and they now come in a variety of styles and functions. Some unique ideas included into handset designs have radically transformed our behavior in everyday life, while others have changed the way we interact with technology. We've seen some masterpieces, some duds, and a variety of oddities along the road. Today, we're looking at the 10 oddest Android phones ever. Following the introduction of text messaging by some of the first mobile phones, the touchscreen became the most significant game-changer in mobile phone technology. With the development of touchscreen-based operating systems like Android, the notion that a phone is solely a device for making phone calls was demolished. It ushered forth an entirely new realm of possibilities. However, the saying that just because you can do something doesn't mean you should does have some truth to it. Some designers of these pocket-sized marvels have missed the mark in the comparatively short time that humanity has been producing mobile phones. Occasionally, a normally excellent phone manufacturer drops a huge stinker in our lap and has their public relations department try to turn a flop into a Christmas wish list topper. While we'd like to assume that some of these ill-fated attempts to satisfy a need that didn't exist are long gone, a few of them are still available. We've compiled a list of the oddest Android phone oddities ever manufactured, regardless of their origin or market success. Hey guys and welcome to Trending Birth. Please consider to like and subscribe to the channel, this way it helps the channel greatly. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. LG Wing Many technological advancements are made in response to consumer wants, and are frequently developed as a result of user feedback. The LG Wing is another option. LG's top brass chose to add a strange revolving screen to one of its flagship phones in response to exactly no one. While many firms have been clamoring in recent years to produce screens with more real estate while refining the foldable screen to give tablet-sized displays that fit in a pocket. LG has chosen to create an entirely new form factor. According to the Slash Gear review, this is an outstanding smartphone in terms of functionality, with cutting-edge technology and specifications that are comparable to those of a flagship model. The LG Wing's spinning second screen, on the other hand, appears to be more of a gimmick than a practical top-tier smartphone for regular usage. During the early commute, it is certain to raise an eyebrow. Samsung Galaxy Beam In terms of smartphone production, Samsung undoubtedly dominates the roost, at least in terms of innovation. Many of its products set the bar for the whole industry, and these groundbreaking technologies could become standard across the board, from high-end phones to low-cost options. By 2012, the smartphone's core functioning had been established, and manufacturers were experimenting with new features to add to and enhance the capabilities of their devices. Samsung decided that DLP projector technology, which is improving and becoming more small, would be the next big thing for its Galaxy series of smartphones. While it looks that this feature has a lot of practical applications, it also has certain drawbacks. The projector consumed a lot of electricity and greatly reduced battery life, and the picture quality was poor. While it appeared to be a fun and beneficial way to use your phone, consumers discovered that actual circumstances when it was the ideal piece of technology were significantly fewer in reality. Because it's a Samsung product, the quality and design were never in dispute. But its actual utility wasn't obvious enough to justify the price, which is likely why it didn't last more than a couple of years. Samsung Galaxy S4 Zoom Each year, additional and better functions are added to mobile phones as the technology evolves. We have Snake, Nokia's first productivity killer, and T9 Predictive Text, the most inconvenient and time-consuming way to communicate a message that could have been easily conveyed in a brief conversation. It was just a matter of time before a genuine, useful digital camera was added to the bundle. Given the wealth of idle computing power housed in our pockets, Samsung made a mistake with the Samsung Galaxy S4 Zoom by striving to do two things well, and failing at both in its quest to get away from the tiny, blurry, pixelated pictures of early phone cameras. Samsung gained a strong foothold in the technology world with the launch of the Galaxy Phone series. Samsung had a certain experience in both smartphones and specialized mobile digital cameras as an electrical maker of a wide variety of digital gizmos, and they opted to merge the two in the Samsung Galaxy S4 Zoom. The Zoom was a decent phone with an OK camera, as is frequently the case when two technologies are combined into one. It was neither a good phone nor a good camera. It failed miserably as a phone and a camera, and as GSM Arena points out, these flaws kept it from becoming a commercial success. Yoda Phone Russia is not the first country that comes to mind when most people think of high technology. The Soviets, on the other hand, were the first to send a man into space, and they continue to produce some of the world's most powerful fighter jets. Even then, the Russian Federation isn't exactly recognized for its gadgets. In 2012, the Yoda Phone, a Russian-designed and not-so-Russian-built phone featuring most of the normal features and functionalities found on any phone, 
as well as a few that weren't, was released. The dual screen configuration of the Yoda phone is its claim to fame. It wasn't foldable, and it didn't have the LG Wing's strange sliding or moving display. The Yoda phone has two screens, one in front and one behind it. Even better, the front has a standard LCD display, but the back has a monochrome e ink display similar to that of a Kindle. The use of the rear screen, as representatives from Yoda phone explained during our initial hands-on session, was designed to be used similarly to that of a Kindle, mostly for reading. While it appears to perform as well as a Kindle, Yoda phone was unable to overcome the challenge of trying to read large volumes of content on a screen that fits in a pocket. The Russians swooped in with a device that no one had requested, aiming to address a problem that no one had. It was perplexing, and it's no longer made, as its creator filed for bankruptcy in 2019. Palm 2018 Many people remember the days of physical keyboards and the thrilling new frontier of mobile portable internet browsing fondly as they recollect the forebears to today's smartphone. Many people wax poetic about their Palm Trio, with all of its innovative and intelligent features packed into a small, portable box with its own operating system, Palm OS. But it isn't the Palm device we're talking about here. The Palm gadget that will usher in the new decade is a brand new piece of hardware from a company that has resurrected the Palm brand for a second chance at fame. Gone are the days of pleasingly tactile and ergonomically small keyboards. Instead, an astonishingly small touchscreen has taken its place. This time, the Palm phone went with the Android operating system instead of the original breakthrough Palm OS, because the device requires an actual grown-up Android phone for any type of meaningful functioning. The decision to make the 2018 Palm phone run Android was likely made. Yes, this device is more of a phone buddy than a phone. The exact value of a phone that requires the use of another phone has yet to be determined especially at a starting price of over $350. The Palm Phone is an excellent example of a device created to meet the needs of no one, to solve an issue that didn't exist in the first place, despite its eventual lack of real-world value. Our entire Palm Phone review reveals why this machine still holds a special place in our hearts. Motorola Flipout Motorola's history dates back to the early 1,900 seconds and it has produced a slew of revolutionary communication gadgets along the way. It's inevitable that a corporation that produces so many complex communication items at the same time as it produces banal, daily products will release the oddball now and then. The mobile phone is the right vehicle for providing a product that puzzles in an industry where technology is rapidly advancing with an off-and-off-track sense of direction. Motorola released the flip-out in 2010 at a period when smartphone designs were still evolving. While some businesses, like Apple, went all in on touch displays, others clung to their physical keyboards, striving to come up with new ways to incorporate them into new models. In a bizarre new way, the flip-out attempted to be the best of both worlds. The screen was small, but it was substantial because it sat atop the keyboard when closed. The hardware was adequate for the time, with Android 2.1, GPS, WIFI, and Bluetooth 2.1, but the design was strange. In the end, mobile phone manufacturers proceeded in a different route, and this model became obsolete. LG Double Play One thing that appears to be apparent in the ongoing evolution of mobile phones is manufacturers' desire for consumers to adopt devices with numerous screens. They've created flipping screens, flopping screens, double-sided screens, fold-out screens, and even transparent screens. LG has a long history of eccentric phone designs, both for smartphones and feature phones, and the Double Play is no exception. On the surface, it appeared to be a good-looking design, with the main screen that was equivalent in size to current competitors. But it was the split keyboard, which was divided by a tiny secondary screen. That marked it unique from a regular phone. It had a Nintendo DS-like feel to it, but with more T-Mobile psychic capabilities. At launch, the smartphone included all of the capabilities you'd expect from an Android 2.3 gingerbread handset, and the unique hardware allowed multitasking. For example, a text messaging app may be open on the lower screen while an internet browser was open on the top screen. The phone also came with a few double play only apps, such as a notepad, that allowed native programs to take advantage of the phone's display. In the end, the applicability in the real world was questionable at best. Motorola Backflip The first Android phone was released in 2008, and it swiftly gained ground on its competitors. Because Android is open source, manufacturers can create phones and alter the operating system to their taste. They were also free to experiment with a variety of setup and hardware configurations, which looks to be exactly what Motorola did when the backflip was released in 2010. In 2010, the physical keyboard was still popular, and phone makers tried their hardest to maintain it that way by incorporating unusual integrations and key placements of all kinds. After viewing the sliding mechanism that other manufacturers utilized at the time, 
Motorola decided to try something different. They opted with a hinge. The phone would open up like a book if it had a regular hinge, but Motorola may have thought it was too straightforward. As a result, Motorola took the risky step of putting the keyboard on the back of the phone and opening it in a unique method. Another concept to place a touchpad on the back of the screen to move a pointer around like a mouse on a laptop was added to this perfectly typical design option. The fact that there are no phones with this physical factor on the market today proves that this design was simply too weird for a second generation. Kyocera Echo Flip out and expandable smartphones are still being produced in 2022. Just as they were when the first significant single model success, the Motorola RAZR, grabbed the mobile world by storm. In recent years, the new line of Motorola RAZR smartphones, as well as machines like the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3, have enjoyed some rather significant success. Between the initial RAZR's pre-smartphone popularity and the beginning of the foldable camera machine that was out of its element, the Kyocera Echo. As we saw in our first hands-on with the Kyocera Echo, this phone was hampered by subpar hardware, a clumsy hinge design, and a lack of optimized software, resulting in a phone that could only be described as meh. While the Kyocera Echo could be used in much the same way as any other huge Android cell phone with an oddly misaligned screen, it had one glaring flaw a large black bar running through both displays. Consumers would have reacted differently if Kyocera hadn't advertised the device as though it was designed to grow into a single, massive display. Unfortunately, this is not the case. The futuristic experience promised by this item was not delivered. Sony Ericsson Xperia Play There has been a constant desire to make video games more compact and accessible since their inception. Handheld video game devices have long been a component of the video game market from the earliest Nintendo game and watch handhelds through the Sony PSP. As a result, it should come as no surprise that a business would include physical gaming controls into a gadget that most people already have in their pockets. It should also come as no surprise that Sony is backing it, as the business behind one of the most popular gaming systems ever built. The Xperia Play, dubbed the PlayStation phone at the time, was an odd combination of mobile phone and portable video game console parts. Given that this is a Sony product, the likeness to the PSP is unsurprising. What was surprising was the decision to forgo the PSP or PlayStation moniker and launch this device without a collection of high-quality PlayStation gaming classics. Perhaps this was the stumbling block to greater sales success. However, it's possible that it's because of this unusual marriage of phone and game system that prices on the used market are steadily rising as it goes closer to vintage gaming territory with each passing year, allowing it to continue on with enthusiast support long after its developers have abandoned it. With gadgets like the Xiaomi Black Shark, the ASUS ROG phone, a line of red magic devices, and the Razer phone, the spirit of the gaming phone that began with this original oddity lives on. That is it for me today guys, I'll catch all of you in the next video, see you there.